All right, Brandon Clayton here, the Algebra Guy. Today, our topic is understanding the meaning of fractions using circles. So before we get into actually solving fractions and putting them in the right order and such, such let's make sure we can understand what is a fraction and, and what, what is going on behind the idea of a fraction. So let's pull up the questions for today. We only have two. So those two questions are... Hey, let me get my pencil out. What is a fraction and how can we use circles and rectangles to model fractions? So we'll look at that in today's lesson. Andy and Bobby love pizza on Monday night. They share a pizza equally. How much of the pizza... Actually, let me get this. See if this is easier to follow. Um, no, I don't like that. Um, so how much of the pizza... Um, does each one get? Are you thinking that each boy gets half a pizza? If you are, you're correct because they got two people. So there's one whole pizza evenly divided into two parts. So each boy gets one of two equal parts. In math, we can write this as one half to mean one out of two. So I, I wrote it one at one half like this, honestly, because it's easier to write when I'm typing. But you'll often see it like this as well. So just know that these two are the same thing. Alright, so they had a piece as two of them, so of course they're going to share it. So we're going to split that piece right down the middle, right in half as so. So that's called one half. Um, each one gets one out of those two pieces. Alright, on Tuesday, Andy and Bobby share a piece with their friends, Fred and Christy, with each person getting the equal amount of the whole piece. How much of the piece does each person get? There's one whole piece of divided evenly into four equal parts. Notice it said evenly, so no one can cheat and say, I'm going to get a bigger piece while giving you one crumb. So it's even pieces of four. What is that going to look like? So here's our pizza again. We divide that into four equal pieces. Should look like that, right? So there you go. One out of four. On Wednesday, the family invites some friends over for pieces. There are a total of eight. I'm going to actually use the number 12 here. Um, so, did I use, no, I think I did use eight. So, we're going to do eight. Um, each person would get one-eighth of a pizza. So, what would that look like if each person got one-eighth of the pizza? Well, if I click through here, I'll show you. Bam! Right there. So, if you count them all up, one, two, three, four, and one half, and four and another half, each person gets um, one eighth of a piece because it's eight of them divided equally. So what is a fraction? All right, let's break it down. What is a fraction? A lot of students get frustrated or scared of fractions because they look so intimidating, but it's really not that complicated. Um, let me try to make it simpler for you. Okay, a fraction is written A over B. A over B are standing for some integers. Um, integers are just numbers, you know, one, two, three, four, and so on. Um, so just two numbers written in that format. And like I said a second ago, I put A with this slash B. It's the same thing as saying A over B. A is called the numerator. And this bottom one is called the numerator, denominator. Um, so that's the term we're going to refer to quite a bit. So keep that in mind. Um, let's do some practice. Name the fraction of the shape that is shaded in each of these figures. So let's start with this one here. Uh, what fraction is shaded in each of these um, figure. So in order to answer this, it's good to start with two, asking yourself two questions to get the numerator and the denominator. So first, let's uh, let's make this fraction. We're gonna, we know we're going to have some kind of fraction, right? And we're going to ask ourselves, how many equal parts are there? So if I count all the equal parts, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I know that the denominator is going to be a total of all the equal parts, so this is eight equal parts, so it's divided. And by the way, you can easily think of this line as divided by, divided by. So, because it literally is dividing two numbers, right? So, something divided into eight pieces. So, how many are shaded? Well, now I can just count one, two, three, four, five. It's five out of eight. So five out of eight, five divided by eight uh, would give us actually the decimal portion or the percentage of that piece. So that's another lesson though. 
And same thing for this rectangular or square. Um, we can say how many equal parts are there. There's three, 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 six, nine. So there's nine. And we know that two are shaded. So totally, we're dividing all this, we're dividing this whole square. And, and that's a point that I want to um, bring home, um, actually, because when you're dividing, when you just have a fraction like this where the numerator is smaller on top, you're really just taking one, something, some whole entity, in this case it's a circle, and you're dividing it into eight pieces, and you're taking five of those pieces. In this case, we're taking the whole square, and we're dividing it, dividing it into nine pieces, and we're interested in these two pieces for whatever reason. Maybe somebody took those two pieces of chocolate or going to paint the house those two parts. I don't know. But you're taking a whole entity and dividing it into nine. So that's a way to represent them. So hopefully this um, idea of fraction is starting to make a little bit more sense. Um, visually think about this, or if you possible, draw it and try to do it yourself. Shade three-fourths of this circle. How would you do that? Well, keeping in mind that a fraction is three over four. This is our numerator and denominator on the bottom. Denominator is telling us how many sections this whole circle is divided into. So since I know it's divided into four sections, I'm gonna cut this so that it's divided into four sections. So I'm gonna do my best here. Uh, it's not gonna be perfect, but I'm gonna get close as I can. There we go. So that's four section, sections, and I'm interested in, let's see, can I do a highlighter? We'll just make it as thick as we can. And we'll do a different color. So we're interested in three out of these four sections. So we're gonna um, color in three out of these four sections. There we go. And I'm not gonna color the whole thing because uh, I don't got that kind of time, nor do you, right? See me watch here in color. So that's one and two and three. So I colored three out of the four sections and that's how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I didn't even have to really draw these lines, but you could have just colored in just this part right here. But the lines really helped me to uh, maintain equity and say I evenly divided everything up so that all of this is now three-fourths of the circle. So that's how you should be thinking of that. Right, let's try another one. What about six eighths of a circle? How do you do that? Well, at, at first, before you knew anything about fractions, this would seem pretty complicated. Um, you're taking six out of eight. You know, what does that look like? Um, well, we know that we're taking this whole circle and dividing it into eight pieces. So that's where you want to start. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's divide it into two pieces. There's two pieces. And then let's divide it into four pieces as evenly as we can. Um, and then we divide it into six pieces. And here's our eight. This reminds me of when we were kids. Anytime it was time to, because we grew up, I grew up with a, a brothers and sisters, five of us. So it was time to cut something and share it. Uh, one person would cut, but the other one would pick. So that way where there was no um, disunity. So um, you can't just cut some you know, crazy looking piece because um, you couldn't pick that one. All right, so we're going to do six out of the eight pieces. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's it. So that's how you're going to represent six out of eight. It's not perfect because we're not robots, but that's a really good rendition of six out of eight because we divide into eight pieces and shade it six that we were looking for. So that's how you do it. Hope that makes sense. All right, let's use the rectangular model. What does that mean? Um, so another way to represent fractions is not just with a circle, but you can also use a rectangle. Um, probably the circle is more preferred and and use often because you think about cookies and pizza and whatnot and rectangles aren't more as natural but they still are very useful let's see how so if I look at this bar on the top this is considered the whole thing right we talked about a whole circle a whole square whatever it is and you can see that one half is represented by this line here crossing down this is one half 
one you know it's broken into halves and you can see that this whole piece right here in the one third area is broken into thirds evenly broken into thirds and then you see the one fourth broken into even fourths and six the same thing so this helps us to see that um, we, actually which ones are equivalent which we'll get into a discussion about but I just want you to get familiar with how to make sense of this model so that you can see um, how it relates to a circle so first question is how many half tiles let me bring this back down a little bit how many half tiles does it take to make a whole tile? So here's our half tiles. How many of these half tiles? It looks like it takes one and two. I'm going to use uh, another color, see if this helps. So it takes two. So our answer for this one would be two. Um, next question. How many one-third tiles does it take to make a whole one? So to make this whole thing, as you can see from left to right, we need three of these tiles. So I'm going to go one, two, this whole tile, and three. And you see the next question, how many fourth tiles does it take to make a whole one? Well, this whole one is considered this length right here because I can see how long the one is up top. So it looks like one, two, three, four. And I hope you're seeing the pattern because the question is going to come up here at the end that challenges you to see that pattern. How many one six tiles does it take to make a whole? So I need one, two, three, four, five, six. So six of these one six tiles um, evenly distributed gives us a whole thing. Now, what if the whole thing, this whole uh, one right here, were divided into 24 equal parts? How many one twenty-fourth tiles would it take to make one whole tile? And I'm hoping you're thinking that should be easy because one half took two tiles, one third took three tiles, one fourth took four, one sixth took six. So one out of 24 would take 24 tiles to make a whole um, a whole uh, entity. All right, let's use the fraction circles to make holes using the following pieces. So what if they gave you fourths? Now we just practiced this, so this should be easy. If they gave us fourths, that should be pretty easy. Actually, you know what? I already did this one. So fourths would look like this. Bam, right there. And I'm only going to just kind of shade it in again. Because it said force, we want to make a hole. So that means I need all of this shaded. One, two, three, and four. Now keep in mind, to be perfect with this, I would just color the whole circle. Um, but I don't have time for all that. And I think you get the idea. So this is whole thing right here. This whole one fourth, this one fourth. So this is four fourths that I'm covering. Four fourths. I cover the whole thing. And fifths. You're going to get the idea, right? Because we're going to divide that into fives, and we're going to shade that whole piece. So all of this gets shaded. We're shading all five of these evenly and equally um, in the perfect world. And yes, I could have colored them beforehand, but what fun would that be? And then lastly, six, um, six sixths. I'm trying to say that three times. All right, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's six, six right there. Um, that's how you make holes. They didn't say fractions. They want the whole thing covered, and we broke it into six, and we colored all six pieces. Co broke it into fists, colored all five pieces. So just laying the foundation for the work that we're about to put in. Um, I just missed that problem, but that's a good problem to start with. So let me go back. All right, the question is, use fraction circles to make holes using three halves. First, let's make a circle. And let me get out my circle tool. So use a fraction circles to make three halves. So here's one circle. Uh, you know what? I kind of want to... No, that's okay. I'll leave it open like that. I was going to color it. So let's make... It says three halves. Well, how do we represent a half? Well, we're just going to draw a line, right? There's a half. So we want three halves. How many halves are here? We got one half. And we got two halves. So we have two halves here. But we need three halves, so we need another circle. Bam. All 
All right, so there's another circle, and we need another, uh oh, we need another half, break this into half, and we need three halves. So we only got one, and we got, um, let me make, make sure this is clear. We got one half here, we got a one half here, and we need another one half, because all those halves would give us three halves. So now we got a three halves. I have to redraw my one half, one half. All right, so now this would give us three halves because this is one half, one half, one half. That makes three halves. So this is how we could use circles to represent that. Um, let's try another one. What if we had um, uh, want to make a holes using eight fifths? So eight fifths. So let me use circles. It says to do eight fifths. So I need to divide this circle into fifths. That's a little bit more challenging because it's not even. So I got to come out like a star. Bam, 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 bam. And that is pretty good. I'm so happy about that. So we want eight fifths though. So let me change the color and draw in our fifths. How many fifths do we have? We got one fifth. Let me make this a little bit thicker so it doesn't take so long. So we got one fifth here. And we got two fifths, three fifths, four out of these, all five of these, and five fifths. So we have, you know, one fifth for each one of these. One fifth, one fifth, one fifth, one fifth, and one fifth. So all these fifths makes five fifths. Is that what we were asking for? Let's see. We want it, take that back eight fifths so what do I need to do to get the other pieces that I'm missing I'm, I got five fifths but I need eight fifths so I need three more so I'm gonna draw a circle and break this into fifths to get my other remaining fifths so here's my let's see if I can do it again because that was pretty good bam bam I'm happy with that not as good as the last one but that's okay um, I need three more fifths, so I need to do one, two, and three. There you go. So these together, if I added these two together, that now gives me this part right here is three fifths. Why? Because as I shared a second ago, that is one fifth. Each one of these are one fifth. One fifth. So all these together give me eight fifths because five fifths over here plus these three fifths is going to give me eight fifths and that circle represents it. All right, what about thirds? Let's do one more with the thirds. All right, so I would encourage you to um, do this yourself. Um, pause it. We want seven thirds. Um, let me... Seven thirds is going to look like that. We're going to break this into thirds. Go back upstairs, Mom. And we need, well, this is going to be one third. We got one third here. We got one third here. And that's not enough because this is only three thirds. So we're going to keep it rolling with another third. So we got another one third here, one third here, and one third here. How many thirds do we have? We got one, two, three, four, five, six thirds. So we got three thirds total here, three thirds total here. That gives us six thirds, but we're not quite to seven yet. So we need another circle into thirds. And so we break this one into thirds. And we only need this one. And that's a three. All right, so this gives us one third here. Now we have our seven thirds, because then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven thirds. And represent it with those circles. 
All right, closing up, did we accomplish those two questions? What is a fraction and how can we use circles and rectangles to model fractions? Yes, we talked about what a fraction was, has a numerator and a denominator um, with that little divisions um, line that separates them. And we talked about how we can represent fractions using circles and rectangles. Thank you for tuning in. Again, I'm the Algebra Guy, and I will see you next lesson.